Hi, my name is Heather. I'd like to welcome you to the Knits and Things podcast. Today is episode 20, and I am taking a hint from Steph um, of the Knitting Samurai and a couple other blogs, a couple other podcasts, and I'm recording from work. So it's Friday, February 21st, 2014, and Fridays at my school are like desert land, although it is like two and a half hours after school got out um, and I've been getting some work done and cleaning up some areas in my room and uh, just getting things ready but I thought that I would try recording from work because I know that on Fridays it's usually a little bit quiet around here and I usually try and stay late on Fridays um, on Fridays when I do pick up my son um, he never wants to leave early because he goes to the, um, the aftercare right here in my school and he always wants to stay and play. He acts like I'm torturing him if I come to get him early. So I figure I'd let him stay and play and have fun. So usually on the Fridays when I have him, I leave late. And then if I don't have anything special going on on the Fridays when I don't have him, um, then I sometimes stay late and get work done just so I don't have to haul a bunch of things home with me. Um, I really don't like taking a bunch of stuff from the classroom to the house because, you know, germs travel that way. Um, and I actually, I am a little bit under the weather right now. I don't think this was caused by the children, though, because my son um, is feeling the same way. So I think that the two of us came across it somewhere in our travels last weekend because we both started feeling a little funny yesterday. Um, so I've got just, you know, kind of a sore throat, and I can tell it's kind of just a head cold coming on. It's really more annoying than anything else. I'm not completely exhausted. Um, my eyes might be a little red. Sorry. Um, and I, I mean, I feel okay. I came to work. It took, took me a little bit more effort to get out of bed this morning, but I wasn't like, I can't possibly get out of bed. I just want to lay here. So it's not, it's not that bad. I took a little bit of, um, Alka-Seltzer cold right as my school day ended. I poured it, poured my medicine right in the bottom of my water bottle and, and just you know, kind of drank that and kept going because I need to get stuff done. It's not going to get done if I'm not here. So I will press on, and then now I have the weekend to rest and recuperate and relax. So, um, I'm going to save the rest of the chit-chat for Gerald McBoing-Boing at the very end, because I have a lot of stuff that I'd like to share if you want to hear it, but I know not everybody does, so I'll save it for the end. So with that, let's move right on into thing one. One, I want to start off and tell you about the finished object, even though I don't have it here with me. I finally finished my Water's Edge cardigan. Yay! Um, it's the only thing from the Ravelinics that's going to get done, though, because today's Friday. The Ravelinics finish this weekend. The other thing that I have, the other things that I have left to knit, cannot possibly be done in two days. So, fail. <laughs> I finished one of the sweaters that I wanted to finish. I actually, what my plans were, I wanted to finish two sweaters and I wanted to do one shawl. So, I didn't get either of those done. Any either of those other things done. So I'm just surrendering and moving on to the other things that I would like to knit and that I need to knit. I'm signed up for a couple different um, swaps and things and I'm not getting those things done either. I don't know what I was thinking. I always think I have more time than I actually do, I guess. So, neither, none of those other things are getting done and it's, I mean, it's, it's knitting. It's no big deal. The world is not going to end. So, I hopefully will be able to insert a picture here item, but it was still uh, drying when I left for school this morning, and I didn't want to take a chance in having it folded up and soggy and wet in my closet all day. So I just left it at, at home to finish drying and finish blocking out nicely. Um, and I still have all the ends to weave in. I blocked it. Um, I actually put it in the sink and soaked it and everything with all the ends still left to be woven in, um, just so that everything would kind of relax where it was. So... Once that is finally finished, I will take pictures of it and everything and wear it, hopefully this weekend. So, there, that's that. Um, and I was very excited to finish that. I'm, that, was, um, that was knit out of Madeline Tosh. And let me, let me go back and explain a couple things. I love fancy yarn. I am not a fancy yarn budget type of person. Um, I don't know. I guess I, I could spend the money on it, technically, but I always feel guilty. Um, you know, it, to have a whole sweater out of Madeline Tosh is a pretty, a pretty penny. Um, but, and I was only able to do that, well, I don't want to say only able. The way I did this sweater was, that was actually from yarn that I won. Um, I think I've mentioned before a couple times that I join um, different um, pools on Ravelry that are connected to different reality games, reality series. 
and I joined last spring, I joined, well, usually each year I join the Survivor Pool and the Dancing with the Stars Pool. And last spring, I won both of them. <laughs> no. So um, that was very exciting. And actually, during the season, once, you know, when everything was going on, I thought, if I end up winning, because I, 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 I thought I had some pretty promising um, characters or, you know, contestants assigned to me at the beginning of the season. So what you do is you sign up um, before the season starts, then players are randomly assigned to each person in the pool, and if your person wins at the end, then everybody in that pool sends you prizes. Um, and you usually fill out a questionnaire, kind of like it's a swap or something, you know, what would you like to receive, what are yarns that you like, what yarn weights, um, you know, it could, and maybe would you like a gift certificate or whatever. So I had thought during the season, I thought, wow, you know what, if I win, I really, I have so much yarn that I really have no right to ask for yarn anyway. Um, and I also kind of thought that, oh, I'm going to get a bunch of little skeins, because I actually won one time in the past. And I got, you know, a couple different little things here and there. And I'm like, I really don't need a bunch of little different things here and there. I really have no right being in these pools. And then I thought, well, you know what? If I win, the, everything was finishing up. The seasons were finishing up right about the same time that I did the walk for JDRF, the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. I said, if I win, I'll just ask people to donate to JDRF. That'll be fine, right? And sure enough, I won the first one, and I asked people if they would donate. You know, I said, in lieu of prizes, um, would you send here? You know, if that's, a, if that's, you know, not the charity, not what you would like to contribute to, because not everybody wants to give to every place that somebody else might think worthy. So I said, if that's, you know, an off offensive or whatever, I would take a gift certificate to uh, the Loop U. So, and I think out of that first one, most people donated. You know, I think the minimum contribution was like $15. So most people made a $15, maybe $20, $25 contribution. And that was that. I think I might have gotten one gift certificate out of that first group. Well, lo and behold, I won the next one, too. So with Survivor, let me see if I remember. I know I'm not going to remember the Survivor person. Am I? Uh, was that Tice? I don't remember. The, the Survivor people are usually not very famous, so it was, it was, my first Survivor win was the model guy, and this last one, I don't remember who it was that gave me this last one, sorry, Survivor person, but I, I won with another Survivor person, but for the Dancing with the Stars, I had Kelly Pickler. So that was great. And so when the second one came through, I thought, heck with this, I'm asking for yarn. So I, with the second group, I gave the option. I said, you know, I've been asking for JDRF, um, Donation. So these are these are what I would like, either a JDRF donation or a gift certificate. And I got a couple more gift certificates there. So really, I paid for a little bit of the sweater, of the Malintosh for the sweater on my own, but most of it was through the donations from the the pools. So that was that was really cool. And I think I don't think that I would have been able to knit that whole sweater out of Malintosh if not for those pools. Um, just because, again, a whole sweater's worth, a whole sweater of that out of Madeline Tosh is like $120. And I just, the, the little Irish girl in me that went through the depression, you know, kind of balks at that. $120 for one sweater? Oh my goodness, you can't do that. And so, I don't know. Probably I would like to have another sweater of, out of that one of these days. And I actually would like to knit a sweater, one of the sweaters that I have coming up, I would like to knit out of Leading Men Fiber Arts. I have a colorway in mind. They have some really cool darker, deeper colors that I'm thinking of. And that's going to be comparable. I do have a discount code with them because I've ordered a couple times. Um, and I promised them that I would use that in March. So I'm thinking about what colorway I would like um, and I've been watching their updates on Instagram when they come through and kind of looking and saying, ooh, do I want that color? Ooh, do I want that color? But I, I think I have a couple in mind, kind of the, some of the deeper grayish, blackish, brownish colors that I would like to do for a moody cardigan. So I'm thinking, and, but so I don't think it'll quite be the same as Madeline Tosh, but close, very similar. So beautiful sweater, the water's edge. Um, I knit it out of the Malintosh DK in the well water colorway. I used a size 7 needle. Uh, I knit the size 37 or is there a 39? Whatever's right there, just the one before the 40s I knit. Um, and I think, I, you know what, I think it was 37 because I remember thinking when it blocks out it's going to be perfect because I'm not a 37. I'm in between a 37 and a 41. So 
I didn't want to have it too big and blousy because I have another another sweater in that a similar silhouette that and I've knit it I knit it twice one time I knit it really big and I don't like wearing it I wear it around the house kind of like a robe or something a little bit to keep me a little warm like in my pajamas and stuff but I don't wear it out of the house so I wanted it definitely to be able to be shown since it's in Madeline Tosh um, so that was the only finished object um, actually no I have another one I'm in the Harry Potter knit and crochet house cup right yes those are all the words that go in there and I am I'm involved in a swap first of all so I have one um, partner there um, uh, did you do am I gonna remember her real name it's bark knit from there and she and I are partners we're gonna swap off and you're gonna swap like a little envelope and um, and give something that you like and then maybe send a little, maybe a little note or just a, a little something good, but it's it's only to go in like a padded envelope. It's not to be a whole package. It's just a real quick little something. So and it, I'm going to put in a couple little things from Maryland as well, so she doesn't know what those are in case she happens to watch this. But I'm also going to include a dishcloth because I've been knitting dishcloths lately and I just love them. So I have, I came across the pattern, the dishcloth, or no, the leafy trio. And so I decided I would knit those up, and I'm going to have these serve dual purposes. The first is going to be for my homework for one of the classes for the month. And so here is one little yellow leaf, and I can't decide. I think it's supposed to go from, I think it's supposed to go from the stocking inside there. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to send her this, but I'm also going to turn this in as part of the homework for the Care of Magical Creatures class. Yes, because you're supposed to think leafy for that class. That was the prompt, is to think leafy. So I'm going to submit the, um, either two or three, depending on how much I get done. I should finish this other one tonight when I'm doing my knitting and watching Olympics. Um, so here's the second of the leaves. The, all three leaves are a little, just a little bit different, but they're all about the same size, and it does fit almost perfectly in your hand. So I was actually thinking like this, because the, the garter stitch side, the yeah, the garter ridge side of the washcloth is perfect, so it almost fits perfectly in your hand for scrubbing. So I really like that one. Um, and I think I might knit a set for myself when I'm done. <laughs> so there's a yellow washcloth. And here is the beginnings of a green one. This one's going to be more of an oval shape, so a little bit more even than this one. where Because see yeah, how this one has kind of the swing to the side there. So this one will be a little more even, but it's going to have some branches that come out, some little veins that come out on either side of that center vein. So that'll be neat the center vein there or if you go this side it's kind of you know recessed so I really like that and I've been really having fun knitting dishcloths lately um, I, I don't like them to knit, knit them you know exclusively because the cotton is a little bit harder on your hands but they're fun quick projects so those I hope she likes those because I've been having fun with them so that's definitely the something that I like so that one one um, dishcloth is the only other thing that's been finished lately um, and I think that's it. I have did start another square for my sock um, square blanket, but I didn't bring it with me, and it's not even finished, so you've seen those before. Nothing exciting there. Um, and then I wanted to talk a little bit in thing one about the knit-along. So the knit-along is going along, and it's actually about to wrap up. So we have one more week left in February. Actually, next Friday will be it. And the knit along went from January 1st to March 1st. Um, but I'll give you a heads up. I have a conference to attend, even though March 1st is a Saturday. I have a conference to attend that day with Zachary for diabetes. And I'll be gone all day long, so it probably won't get closed early. I know it won't get closed before we leave because we have to kind of hike across town to the other side of D.C. for our conference. Um, so it probably won't be closed until later that day. So just get them in there when you can before I close everything on the first probably you know early evening time and then the next time I record we'll draw for those prizes oh and heads up because there's only I know there's a lot of people kinda of talking back and forth but as of right now there's only five finished projects so there's four prizes and only five finished projects so far so your odds are pretty good of getting a prize um, I don't have the list here with me but I know I was gonna give away two patterns and some Malabrigo and then um, Hot Pink Socks donated the collage needles and yarn set. So there's there's some I think there's some pretty good prizes. Um, and plus you have a finished sweater when you're done. Uh, my sweater I don't know I I said something on Instagram, and I think I said something in the group that I tried on. I've been knitting the Miranda. 
and I tried it on the other day and it's I guess my gauge is a little bit bigger than I thought it was going to be and it's a little it's a little oversized I know there's supposed to be positive ease in the sweater but I'm not liking the way it is I think it should I think it should be like zero ease or maybe one inch of positive ease and I've got like two or three inches of positive ease and I don't like the way it's fitting so I'm probably not going to finish it um, I don't know. I am very close to finishing it, so I guess I could knit it and find somebody to give it to, but I'm trying to think of who I could give it to. I bet I have somebody I could give it to. I don't know. I'm considering. <laughs> I'm considering, but so it's on pause right now. When I tried it on and realized that it wasn't going to get to where, it want, where I wanted it to be and what it was going to look like, I just kind of put it on pause and worked on my water's edge, so no big deal. Um... And pop over to the the thread. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we have automatic lights in here. And I know if I'm sitting at my desk, actually, you guys are like on the edge of my desk. If I'm sitting at my desk, right behind my desk is way too messy for you guys to see. So that's why I kind of slid over here. This is a little bit better, although piles, piles. Mm. Anyway, um, but there's automatic lights, and if nothing happens in the classroom in 20 minutes, the lights go out. But I've been sitting here, and I've been kind of moving around. I guess I'm kind of behind the sensor. <laughs> so I hope that doesn't happen again. But <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, and I, sometimes it happens when I'm working at my desk, too. So I guess this area is just not that big. And I can, I can, stand, I can sit here and wave my arms, and it won't come back on. The lights won't come back on. I have to actually stand up out of my chair <laughs> to get it to go. So that's funny. Oh, and I have on my uh, – I, every other Friday I wear my – school t-shirt just because you don't have to think about what you're going to wear when you wear your school t-shirt. You throw on some jeans, you put on your school t-shirt, and you're off. So I, I literally like that option. I know it's not very professional looking, but darn it, it's easy. So um, that's about all. Oh, I was saying look over at the um, the conversation thread where everybody's um, been talking about what they're knitting on the for the, K, for the knit along, for the sweater knit along, because there's some really, really nice projects. Um, Christy from the Innis Knit Podcast is knitting the, um, oh, what's it called, the wrapped pullover, and I'm very tempted by that. It's got this very interesting cable that starts at one hip and goes across your body and ends at the opposite shoulder, and so, oh, it's just, it's really pretty. So I'm really tempted by that because um, it's just very unique, and I love those kind of sweaters where it's a very unique construction and a unique design that they're going to get people to go, wow, where did you get that sweater? Um... There's also been talk of um, the Delancey cardigan that I really like. Um, and one of my local knit friends, Yvonne, is doing um, one called the Yeti pullover. And that's got a really nice, you know that cable that's in the very center, it's crossed, but on the edges you can barely tell that it's really a cable because it just kind of disappears and it's got stock and net around it. I really like that look. And that Yeti pullover has that going up the very center. So I really like that one too. So... I don't know, I'm putting more things on my list. Um, the only other thing that's going on in knitting is socks. So I'm not going to make a separate thing to section because this is it <laughs> right now. Um, these are the rainbow socks. I've been just kind of taking these when I don't have to think about anything else. So I took it last night uh, with Gerald McBoing Boing to a concert that I went to to listen to him play. Um, so while I was waiting for him, I knit on this. And I think I got maybe two stripes done. Um, but that's really it. I am also in um, with Mel of the Single Handed Knits podcast. I joined her Friendship February or February Friendship uh, swap where a couple of people, were, we all joined joined in the discussion if we wanted to, and then we kind of paired ourselves, matched ourselves up according to if we were interested in the same yarn that somebody else had or the same items and same interests, rather. And so... I paired up with, I'm going to forget her name, Claudia Gabrielle or Gabrielle Claudia. She's got two beautiful names. Um, and she lives in Switzerland, I want to say. Uh, but she's interested in running and her yarn was really nice. So I kind of asked her if she wanted to kind of pair up because I thought it would be nice to kind of be inspired 
to get back into my running um, with her to make sure that when, you know, come springtime, when I want to do those couple 5Ks with Zachary, that uh, I was ready. So I thought she'd be a good inspiration for me. And she's very friendly and very nice and, um, and very open and giving so far. So I look forward to sharing with her. And as a matter of fact, I wanted to grab, I probably did not grab it. I wanted to show you the yarn we were trading. I'm going to trade, or I'm going to start knitting, um... I'm interested in knitting the I'm looking for fox and socks. Oh, I'm looking at knitting the little minx socks, which have kind of an all over it's an all over cable. It's a very small cable, but it's really more of a twisted cable. It's not really a true cable, so you can do it without a cable needle if you want if you want and are able. Um, it's just got a little a little twisted cable kind of all over the foot, and I thought that would be a nice one to do toes and heels with her her yarn and then do the rest of the sock in the um, I'm looking at using the Sock Bunny Studios Jane yarn that I have in the Runs With Scissors colorway so I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to use that and I think that's what I'll do so I have the the yarn that I want to send to my partner all skeined up and ready to send um, and when I'm off buying the the Maryland items for Barknet this weekend, I'm going to get her a couple things too and send her because I bet that'll be kind of new and unique to her too. Although wouldn't it be funny if they have similar things in Switzerland for whatever town she lives in? <laughs> so that would be cute. So Fox and Socks is there, but not really. All right, so let's move on to thing two. Okay, so for thing two, I just have, I'm still working on my Spin Your Bin projects, and I have finished one bobbin of the blue mystery wool that I had in my stash. So here's the bobbin. And this is yarn that I dyed up, I want to say, with Wilton's Cake Dyes. Um, it's a little more teal than it looks on the screen. Here, there's a little more green there. It's very, very blue, kind of like oceany blue. But here, it's a little bit more, there's a little more green to it. And like I said, I think it was Wilton cake, Wilton's Cake Dyes that we used. I wonder if I get there. Sometimes, nope. Nope, it's just not going to be the right color. Probably, I want to say the fluorescent lights. That's a little bit closer. Um, so I'm trying to spin this. Um, as thin as I can, I'm going to do just a two ply. This is half of the half of the braid, and I'm doing long draw with this. So tonight is Friday, and I'm used to well, I was used to going to a spinning group on Friday. So Fridays have always been kind of deemed spin Fridays. So when I get home tonight, I'm going to try and spin up the rest of this. Um, and I like to spin and listen to podcasts, not podcasts. Well, yes, podcast, but I like to not have to look at the screen. So I've been listening to audiobooks, and I've been listening to Ender's Game, uh, which is by Orson Scott Card. Um, I've kind of heard good and bad with this book, but I know it's a book that um, younger readers, like my son, might actually be interested in. So I was going to listen to it to see what he thought. And sure enough, about halfway through the book, I thought... This would be so much more interesting if I was an 11-year-old boy. <laughs> you know, if I was a boy, because it talks all about, like, um, you know, space school and, and war school and being, a, you know, a soldier ripped out of your home at six or seven years old. Um, so it's, it's, I think it's mu very much geared to boys, but it's still a really good story. I'm in, I'm a little bit more than halfway through. I probably have about, um, I'm maybe about three-fourths of the way through the book, and it's, it's gotten good again. It was, it was very interesting in the very beginning, trying to figure out what was going on and how this world worked. But then once he got to the flight school, it kind of, or the space school, it kind of, there was a little bit of a lull after he figured out what was going on, and now it's gotten good again. So after he's in school for a while, there's a, a really good twist. Um, and so I'm, I'm really liking it again, so I'll probably listen to the rest of that as I spin tonight. So that is it for thing two. I, I do have some more spinning to talk about, but that's coming up in enabling. So I'll save that for the need section. So let's move on to Mulberry Street. And in Mulberry Street, um, that's where I talk about things going on in my local area. And I'm probably going to do some switching around here on the computer because I want to read some things to you. So Mulberry Street, I missed my third Saturday, or yeah, my third Saturday meeting last weekend because I took my son skiing. So again, I'll talk about that later in Gerald McBoing Boing in case you don't care about our ski trip. Uh, but we had a blast. Um, but I, I mean, I was sad to miss the skiing because the, the timing of the meeting, knit meetings, um, a couple years ago, 
several years ago, I was a member of a knit group, and it just seems like when you're in the dregs of winter and everybody's been stuck inside, when you finally get to get out and go to knit group and just sit and knit with your friends and there's kind of snow around, it's just a really cozy feeling. So I was kind of sad to miss that, but I'm excited to go up some mountains and, and take Zachary skiing. So... I missed the meeting, but we had a good time. But I do want to talk about an event that's coming up. So if you are lo somewhat local, or if you've ever thought about coming to visit the area in the early in the spring, we have what's called the Homespun Yarn Party coming up in March. So the Homespun Yarn Party, and I will be going. The Homespun Yarn Party is at Savage Mill Mall in Savage, Maryland. And it's a, it's a beautiful old mill that's been turned into a mall. Um, and they have a, um, a ballroom space, and the, the coordinators of the Homespun Yarn Party rent out that ballroom space and have vendors come in, and it's run beautifully. They give away door prizes. They kind of control who goes in, so there's not too many people in at one time, although in the very beginning, even though, when, even though they cut it off at their cap, their cap is still, there's a lot of people looking around at the same time. So you kind of have to map your way around the room and see how you're going to get to who you want to see. Um, and you kind of have to just take your chances that what you really want to get and what you really want to see might not be there at the very, or when by the time you get there. That's, that's just the way it is. And it's all, it's called the Homespun Yarn Party because it's only open to small, independent, well, I don't know about small, but independent um, yarn sellers fiber makers, um, craftspeople. It's only independents. It's none of the big name people unless you consider like Neighborhood Fiber or um, Neighborhood Fiber or Dragonfly Fibers and stuff like that. Um, big names, which I consider them big names, but they're also small independent run businesses. They just happen to be in this local area as well. So they're there as well. Um, right along with everybody else who is there. They're an independent business, so they all belong to the Homespun Yarn Party. Um, and so that's, again, Sunday, March 23rd from noon to 5 at Savage Mill Mall. I recommend making sure that you have something to eat before you go and standing in line to get in as soon as you can, dropping your things, dropping your tickets off for the drawings, and kind of just milling around. Take, I usually go around, I take a little tour around the room and see what I like, and I go back, and if what I still like is there, then I have license to buy it if it's within my budget. I don't know how much I'm going to buy this time because I kind of want to use up what's in my stash. I'm feeling a little guilty. Um, but we'll see. And then they have some really nice places to eat at that mall. So what I usually do is a couple friends and I go and we get we grab something to eat after we've kind of shopped for a little while. So we'll see. Um, but that should be fun and I will be there um, for a little while. There's kind of not a lot of room to move around. There is a center area that has where the dance floor is, where they put tables and everything, but there's also usually a charity project going on. So really, if you're sitting at the tables, I feel you should be knitting for the, on the charity project. But we'll see. We'll see how it works this year. So that is what's going on on Mulberry Street. And let's move on to Everyone Needs a Need. All right. So... With everyone needs a need, I'm in a group on Ravelry called the Yarn Snob or Yarn Snobs Incorporated, and we had a swap called the I'd Like to Try That Swap, and so you were um, you joined in if you wanted to, and you got to list three different yarns that you've never tried before that you thought, man, I would really like to try that someday, and so I listed a couple down, and the one that I really really wanted, my partner, thank you Mia, got me. And I'm so excited. I really want to bump this to the head of the line for the sock yarn. So she picked up for me Fiber Nymph Dye Works in the Inversibles. And this colorway is Tree Frog Green and Sunken Treasure Gold. So if you can see, I don't know, these colors are similar, but just very similar, but just different enough. So the green is the tree frog green, and the gold is the tree frog gold. So this skein will give me green stripes, large green stripes, and small yellow stripes. This skein will give me large yellow stripes and small green stripes. So that when you knit the two, you'll get a really neat looking pair of socks. And I'm going to try the uh, partying it up and getting down sock pattern from Megan Williams from Sockinet Zombies. So I really am anxious to knit this, but I want to get started on these on the um, Runs With Scissors colorway first, but these are next, so 
I have a lot of sock knitting to do. It's a good thing I said I was going to knit 12 pair in a year. <laughs> so this was my main gift from there. The yarn is always the main focus of the swap. So the yarn was there, but she also gave me some wonderful chamomile tea and a row counter. Um, and I was very excited. And I was, I was really excited because Mia was my partner, and Mia is local to me as well. So we got to meet up um, last Sunday after our ski trip and everything. We got to meet up and kind of, you know, get together and have a cup of coffee and talk for a little bit at Starbucks. So that was really exciting. So that's one thing that I think you should check out. Although the fiber spades, especially the inversibles, is hard to come by. It's, um, they sell out very quickly, the updates. So the other thing I wanted to talk about that's new um, is from Shadow and Fiber Arts. My club came in for this month, and I had actually been spoiled on this. I think my mail was a little, like a day late, but it crossed over a weekend with the holiday. So I saw it on, um, on Instagram before I actually got it, but I was very happy that this was the colorway. So I signed up with Shadow and Fiber Arts, who is an Etsy dealer. I signed up for her fiber club because this is a this is a Harry Potter fiber club, and so each month I'll get four ounces of some kind of fiber. Um, she has no guarantees about what it is, although I've asked her to please, please, please not send me regular merino. Um, the, I, the last one was regular merino, and I'm going to try and spin it. It feels a little different than other merinos that I've spun because it's the super fine merino. But I know I've had problems with um, straight merino, straight from a mill before. So this might be different in the dyed braid. So I'm willing to try it and see because I love the colorway from last time too. But this is the Harry Potter colorways. These are different Harry Potter colorways and this one is Ron as in Ronald Weasley. And I really like that because I like that the, to me, this is what I'm seeing. I see the bright gold and the burgundy as the Gryffindor colorways because he was part of Gryffindor and I see there's a different gold here. I see that as his ginger hair. And then the the grayish green, I'm kind of stuck as to why that's there, but I want to say maybe he cracks me up because he gets very queasy at different things like spiders and you know, he gets so nervous about his first um Quidditch game. He's all, you know, he's a little green around the gills for those things. So I I think that, that it matches up definitely, but I'm wondering if that's what, that was her interpretation too with putting the grayish green in there as well. Um, so I don't know. Either way, I like it. I think it's really nice colors. It's it's similar to but still different from the, the Ginny colorway that came out last time. And Ginny is actually Ron's sister, so that's kind of interesting, but I really like that. And this is four ounces of Polworth, so I definitely am anxious to spin this up. Um, I'm actually a little tempted. We'll see how my bin goes, but I'm tempted to throw this in the, in the bin for the spin your bin and make sure this gets done this year. So that's, that's really nice. And again, that's Shadow and Fiber Arts. Um, and her clubs, her, um, clubs are yes, very she reasonable. Is very reasonable. She runs a very great business. Um, if you are interested in a fiber club and you like Harry Potter, you might want to check her out. Um, and sorry for the weird kind of segment there. Um, the weird cutoff by storage, I guess, was full because my iPad stopped recording and I talked for a long time after that. So <laughs> I think that was it for Everyone Needs a Need. And then I was going to move on to Oh, the Things You Can Think. So for the Oh, the Things You Can Think, that's what I talk when I talk about upcoming knits. And my upcoming knits are continuations of things that I've put on pause because I knit, I start things without finishing things. And I'm not going to apologize because apparently I do it all the time. And I still have tons of hand-knit things, and nothing bad happens. So if I'm a little scattered, who cares? Okay, so the first thing is the Follow Your Arrow Shawl. I started the Follow Your Arrow Shawl a little bit late. I was hoping to get it done for my one of my Ravelinux projects when I was thinking that I could knit five things for the Ravelinux because I don't have a part-time job, or I don't have a full-time job, or a child, or a little vacation planned in the middle of the Olympics. No! <laughs> so, I started the Follow Your Arrow a little bit late, but this is the plan. I am going to knit the, there's five clues, there's an a, choice A and a choice B for each clue. I'm going to knit straight A's until the very last clue, and then I'm going to knit the clue B, because I like the way the, um, the edge, the finishing edge happens with the B. Um, and when you do straight A's like that, the way clue three ends and clue four, clue four starts, you wind up with little hearts, and I really like that. So 
This is my clue one and part of clue two, although don't look too closely at clue two because it's about to get ripped out. I made a mistake. I made a mistake on clue one and had to rip it out and start again. So now it's clue two's turn, and I'm hoping that clue one and clue two will talk to clue three, and then I won't have to do it again. So I messed up. I wasn't paying attention, I wasn't paying close enough attention to the what the direction said about how to do the repeats um, for clue two. So things are not lined up the way they should be. On each corner of the triangle, which the one corner is here where the where the yarn overs go, and one corner is actually at the corner of the triangle for clue one. Um, at each of those corners, <clears throat> you're supposed to have something different looking than what I do have. And my stitch counts are not going to work out right at the end, so I'm going to rip it out. I'm actually going to rip it out until I have about two rows left, and then I think I can just put everything back on the needles and pick back the one or two rows. And by the time I do all that picking back for just those one or two rows, I should line myself up again with where I picked up around the edge for the end of clue one. So let's hope, because I didn't put any lifelines in. Like a dummy. So whatever. It's just knitting. It will all work out. So that is the Follow Your Arrow Mystery, which I hope to get back to and have finished soon. Finished soon, but I also owe my mother a shawl, <laughs> so I need to finish hers. I was thinking today at lunchtime when I was thinking about the shawls that I need to finish, I wonder if I call, oh, because the shawl, not to be a little scattered or anything, the shawl that I knit for my mother for Christmas was the U and I series from Fiddle Knits Designs, and she's got another mystery going right now. And I was thinking that she always seems so helpful and friendly. I wonder if I, if I send her a private message and say, "Hey, this is what I did to mess up my shawl. How is this going to work? Or what are your suggestions for how this is going to work for finishing the shawl? Because I'm worried that once I get to the end of these next clues, that things are not going to work out right. So I don't know. I'm thinking about." appealing to her um, and hoping she doesn't say just re-knit it <laughs> because I messed up at the very beginning and set up my rows wrong so that I'm knitting an asymmetric shawl when it should have been very symmetrical. So that that shawl still has to be finished too. That was her first um, you and I, the first of the series of the you and I knit alongs. So we'll see. Um, the next thing that I would like to get back to knitting is my folded cardigan. So I started folded over the summer and I got as far as the body. Here's the body. I'll knit to my length, which is now waiting patiently for sleeves. And the sleeves are here. I'm knitting the sleeves two at a time. Um, I'm knitting this out of Miss Babs, I don't remember the name of the sock yarn, but it's the Vlad's colorway, which is a lovely deep brick red. It looks a little pinky, a little bright there, but it's a nice, it's a nice deep red. Definitely my red. I need my red to have um, a touch of yellow in it, not too much blue, and that's exactly what this is. Um, I think this, this red does have blue and red in it or blue and yellow in it, but I think it's got more yellow than blue, and it's definitely a color that goes a little bit better. Oh, that looks better. A little bit better with my complexion. So the only modification I'm making to this sweater is I knit, um, I did knit the body a little bit longer because I have a long torso, even though I'm only 5'4", um, and I'm doing a hemmed edge to the sleeves and the body where in the pattern it says to do a rib, um, just a couple rows of ribbing. So. That was my idea, thinking that the ribbing, that the folded hem wouldn't lift up, but I can see, and maybe it's just because it's been in a bag for a while, I can see that it is folding up anyway. So we'll see. Maybe when I block it, it'll all flatten out because, you know, everything blocks out, right? <laughs> okay. So those are the things that I'm looking forward to getting back to. I do have one knit that I think I'm adding to, <coughs> excuse me, that I think I'm adding to my list, and I just finished watching... Um, Stacking at Zombies, their latest podcast episode, and Megan was wearing her Via Jante, um shawl, finished one, and she was talking about how the name Via Jante means traveler, and how it be, would be a great lightweight something to take with you when you're traveling to have to cover up in case you're cold or in case you know the weather it makes that slight turn that you weren't planning on. So I need to look up, look it up and see exactly how much um, see exactly how much yardage is required because I think I could probably knit that. So 
or I, I think I would like it if I knit it. Not that I could knit it. I could definitely knit it, but I think I would really, really like it. Um, I use my clap o tee that way, where I take it with me and it kind of I kind of shove it in a bag and I use it when I need to. And it can be you know it can be small and around my neck if I need it to, or you can stretch it out because the clap o tee when you get done knitting is huge because of all of the drop stitches. Um, but then it is also a little bit more open because of all those drop stitches. So. I don't know. I, I think I would really like the Viajante. And I like to have a stockinette project going anyway, so I think I might. So let me see. I've just pulled it up here. And it takes uh, about 15, about 16, just less than 1,800 yards of lace weight. So I don't know that I have any. I think I might have brown lace weight. Although that's a very lace, light lace weight, and I might want to do it in something a little more substantial. Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, I think I, I think I would really like that. So I'm gonna kind of uh, entertain my options and see. I wonder if I could spin 1,800 yards of lace weight. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, that one's that one I've really been thinking about too. So, with that said, that is it for the regularly scheduled program and for all the knitting. The rest of the stuff I'm gonna talk about is. Gerald McBoing Boing. So if you'd like to continue listening, I think we've been doing some cool, fun things. If you could care less, I understand. And happy knitting. And I'll My son just turned 12, guys. Oh my goodness. My kid is 12. Oh. So he's... And I just... I don't know. I just... I love my kid. Hopefully that's a parent because <laughs> I talk about him all the time. So this last weekend was um, his weekend closest to his birthday with me. So we took off and went skiing. Um, I did invite his dad to go, but his dad is recovering from an injury over the summer where he had some pretty major knee surgery um, and decided that he didn't want to go. He's actually getting ready to train to do the... JDRF does a walk every spring, and the American Diabetes Association does a bike ride um, in through like spring, summer, and fall um, in different places in different different states up throughout that time. So he's gearing up to do one of the races, and so he's always been a big bike person, and he wants to make sure that he doesn't re-injure anything before the bike race, and that's fine, whatever, no problem. So. I took off with my son and a friend. I told him he could bring at least he could bring one friend with him, and we were planning on meeting another older friend there, um, but their plans got canceled, um, and so we ended up not meeting with them. But that was fine because then it was just the two boys, and they were off snowboarding and having a good time, and I was over on my side of the mountain skiing. Um, and what we do, and I think I when when we were there, we had a lot of people that were on the same channel that we were. And so we had to kind of play around. We take walkie-talkies with us. So we had to, and we had to kind of play around to find a channel that was relatively open, where there weren't a bunch of people already kind of checking in with each other, so that we would have a clear um, avenue of, of communication between us. With you know Zachary having type one diabetes, the thought of him being off on one side of the mountain by himself and me having no idea where he is and not necessarily being able to get there very quickly to to help him. Um, just is not a good idea. So this is actually something that he and his dad instituted um, the last time we went so that we would always be in contact, and it worked wonderfully. Um, I also saw people using the same technique on the cruise ship we were, went on over um, winter break that, you know, the kids had a walkie-talkie, so they were off on their part of the ship, and the kid parents were off on their part of the ship, but they could still be in contact with each other and kind of check in. So that, And I think it's, it's very reassuring. It's a nice way to keep in touch. Um, so we went up. Friday night, because we didn't have school that day, um, so we left about lunchtime on Friday, got up there about 2, 3 o'clock, checked in, got all of our stuff, and took a class real quick. Um, I just learned to ski last year, and I'm very, I'm a big chicken anyway, so I wanted to take another class, and I wanted to do it Friday so that we'd have all day Saturday to ski, um, which we ended up taking classes Saturday too. Um, and my son has been snowboarding before, but he's a little like his mom, and I think he, 
he has in his mind that he can do a lot of stuff, but he realized once he got the board on that he really couldn't. So I kind of talked him into taking the beginner class one more time with his friend because his friend had been skiing before but never snowboarding, and they're very different. Um, and so he uh, kind of reluctantly agreed to take it, but I think once he strapped himself into the snowboard again and was like, oh, wait, what do I do? I think in his mind he was like, oh, okay, I'm really kind of glad that I'm taking the beginner class. So he and his friend went off to take the beginner class. I kind of checked in with the instructor real quick and said, hey, this little guy has type 1 diabetes, but he's got sugar in every pocket imaginable. And he also has a little meter that tells him exactly what his rate is at all times. And I have a walkie-talkie with me. Call me if you have a problem. She's like, no problem. Where are you headed? I told her I was trying to make a uh, beginner class on the other side of the mountain. She said, I've got you covered. She got on her walkie-talkie and radioed in to the people that were running the class that I was going to and said, hey, you have this parent that's going to show up a little bit late. Let her in. This is her level. You know, save space for her. And I just kind of zoomed on into my class. And I took a, a refresher class and kind of got comfortable again and skied for maybe another hour after that and then kind of sat back and waited for the guys to finish. And we left just when they were closing down for the night at about 10 o'clock at night. And we stayed down there that night. Uh, we stayed in, you know, just a nearby town. We kind of kept to go down the mountain and off on the highway just for a little while and stayed overnight, got up the next morning, had breakfast and went right back. Um, now it was the holiday weekend and it was very crowded on Saturday. Friday night was not too bad. Saturday you could barely move. Barely move. So I was very glad that I was taking a class because when you take a class you get to cut in the line for the ski lift. <laughs> so that was very convenient that we would get on the ski lift, go to the top of the mountain, the instructor would tell us what we were going to work on and because it was like a level two class by then and we would kind of ski down the mountain doing what she asked us to do, get back in line, up we go, try out something new, ski down, go back up. So that was really good because the class was like two and a half hours long so it worked out really well. We got lots and lots of practice and didn't have to wait in line. And then just when our, les just when our lessons were leaving, were ending, um, we had time to kind of ski a little bit more and I skied a couple times down on my own and then went to check in with my son and by about this time he had checked in with me and said their class was over and they were going to do some skiing over on the one slope so I went over near where they were and kind of got some pictures of them coming down on one side of the mountain where they could go through some little tubes and everything nothing big I mean they weren't doing any jumps or anything but you know it was fun to ski through the tube and kind of go over you know a little bump so um, and then he told me that his stomach wasn't feeling too good and then he wanted to go in. We went in and got something to eat, but he had complained that his stomach wasn't feeling too great and he had said the same thing earlier in the morning. Well, by the time we ate our lunch and then went back to skiing, we went back to skiing for maybe another two hours and he called me and said, I'm going in to where we were for lunch and I need to use the bathroom. So he went in to use the bathroom. And I kept trying to check in with him on the walkie-talkie and couldn't get him, so I put my things down and went back in to check on him. Actually, I turned all my things in, went back in to check on him, and when I caught up with him, he says, I've been to the bathroom a couple times, not to be gross, sorry, this is totally disgust this is the disgusting part of the story. If you don't want to listen, I would skip forward like maybe five minutes. Um, I've been to the bathroom a couple times, and I threw up a couple times. I was like, oh, Great. So then I had to go back out and find the friend. Well, the friend didn't have the walkie-talkie. Zach had the walkie-talkie because Zach's the one we were concerned about. Well, now I've got to find the friend. Well, unbeknownst to me, as I'm going out to look for him, he was concerned because he hadn't heard from us in so long that he was coming in to look for me. So I'm on the hill looking for him, and he's inside looking for me. So clearly that worked out very well, right? <laughs> and then while I'm standing there, they took like three people off the mountain. The ski patrol took like three people off the mountain on stretchers. So that didn't make me feel any better at all. So I finally catch up with him, and I said, dude, come on, Zach is really not feeling good. And I felt really bad because he asked, he said, can I go up the mountain one more time? And I said, no, honey, he's really not feeling good. We need to go. And he's like, well, yeah, if he's not feeling good, we should go. He's such a sweet little guy. So we ended up leaving a little bit earlier than we planned. There was supposed to be a big, like, um, parade of lights that night because it was the holiday weekend and they do this a special parade where they turn off the lights on the on w one of the main slopes and they get people to kind of volunteer to ski down the mountain with a torch in their hand. Um, so we wanted to stay for that and then leave but we ended up leaving you know as soon as we got all of our stuff together because he just wasn't feeling good and so then we came home 
which he had caught a stomach bug somewhere, so not a big deal. You know, it kind of put a, an early end to our, our day, but he even said that he still had fun. Um, so early into our day, but then the, the bad part is is that a stomach bug for someone with type 1 diabetes or someone taking insulin is not fun anyway. Um, as it turns out, not eating for an extended period of time can be very dangerous if you're taking insulin. Um, somehow everything doesn't work. I don't know exactly how it works, but if you're not actually eating, then your, even though your blood sugar may be okay, other things may still be going on. It's something, there's something with the, your ketones, and basically your body thinks you're starving, um, which is what happens if someone doesn't eat for a while. Your body thinks you're starving, and with someone with diabetes, it can turn very, it can turn very serious very quickly. So we were at home for the next day, next 24 hours, monitoring ketones. Um, the part he liked was that he got to drink real soda. <laughs> <laughs> because that was all he would, he didn't want to eat, um, but you have to keep carbohydrates going in somehow, so he drank um, full sugar ginger ale for a whole day. <laughs> That's all he had. He had like two cans of soda and water for 24 hours. That's all he had to eat. He didn't eat anything. I finally got him to eat a couple pieces of toast the next day after that, and then he went back to eating, you know, little bits here and there. Um, and he's he's fine now, so that's good. And which is was actually good because on Wednesday was his birthday. So on Wednesday was actually his birthday, and we went out to dinner to celebrate with my parents and with his dad. We just kind of all go out to eat um, the evening of his birthday somewhere together. Usually my sister and her husband go too, but with them with a new baby, well, not new baby, but with them with a the one-year-old, we didn't want them to have to have him out and get him off his schedule. So we, um, he actually got to see her on Tuesday. My sister came and got him early from school and took him out for a movie date. They went to see Robocop early in the afternoon when it was kind of, you know, less crowded. So that's my Gerald McBoing Boing turning 12. And actually last night I said earlier when I was working on my sock, last night he went to had a very busy week. Last night he went to the local high school and performed in a, I forget what they call it, a combined or a consortium or something concert where he and all of the other elementary schools for this area performed along with all of the other middle schools for this area. Their band and orchestra kind of got together and did combined performances. Um, and that was really nice. It was at it's at the high school that he is scheduled to go to based on where we live right now. I'm not thrilled. The high school is humongous. The areas that they pull from, actually, the high school is humongous. And it's the newest high school in the county. So people lie, cheat, and steal to get their kids in there. And there's a lot of kids that come in from not-so-savory areas, let's just say. Like bad parts of D.C., which I can understand people wanting to send their kids to a better area or to a better school if they live in a, in a disadvantaged area. Sorry. <laughs> if they live in a disadvantaged area. But the school is overcrowded. It's humongous, so there's no way that the, the teachers can get to know all the kids that are assigned there. Um, and I just, I don't know. They have a great marching band. <laughs> but it just, it really worries me. So we're looking at the different options um, for public school, and I really kind of feel a little traitorious thinking about either A, moving, or B, considering private school for my child, it's considering I teach in public school. But, you know, you have to do what's best for your child. Um, so, I don't know, there's lots of decisions coming up here shortly, very shortly, for him. Uh, he's sixth grade this year, which is right currently is still in this school building with me. Um, but next year he will move off to middle school and we're looking at one option, but the path, if he, if he does get into that option, the path after that is not, not any better than the option that we already have. So I'm kind of weighing my options and seeing which is the best one. Because we, we are a public school and you do have different areas that you're slated to go to, but there are, are also, in my county, there are also options for how you can get different programs and things, for how you can go to a different school than your home assigned or your home-based school. Um, so I don't know, we'll see. There's different options, including performing arts, which is, he plays oboe. So there's performing arts available. 
the um, middle school that he would normally go to is also um, participates in an international baccalaureate program, which then feeds into a better option for high school, I think. Um, but there's always, you know, there's always other options. There's another county nearby, actually the county where my sister lives, that has um, much better rated high schools. Now everybody's everybody's experience when they get into a school is different depending on that person and who else is in there with them. Um, and, to, you know, school is what you make it. Um, you know, what your family believes in and and how strongly your child is tied to what your family believes in I think has a lot to do with it. And I think he's got a better head on his shoulders than, than some kids and would would hopefully make better choices. But it just, you know, it still worries me. He's my baby. He's my only one to worry about, so... I worry. So with that said, I think I'm done for the week. Uh, I hope to be back next week. I'm not sure. So hopefully, hopefully next week, but we'll say definitely within two weeks, you should see another episode coming out. Until then, I hope your nitty makes you happy.